And we are back talking about some of the common side effects that can happen with the GLP-1 receptor agonists such as Ozempic, Wagovi, Saxenda, and Trulicity. We have covered heartburn in detail. You can check out my previous video on that, on what the heartburn is, what is going on there, and how you can ultimately manage it. And today we are going to talk about nausea. But before we dive into that, everybody, welcome back to the program. My name is Dr. Dan. I am a pharmacist turned obesity expert. And of course, I need you to hit that subscribe button down below. I say it every single time. Why haven't you done it? You've got to do it so that you don't miss another video. You also need to check me out on my other channels at the official Dr. Dan. We are on the TikTok, the Gram, the Facebook. We are out there. Go there for the daily content that I post as well. If you have any questions or that sort of thing, drop them in the comments below and I will do my best to get to them. Now, I don't know about you, but nausea is quite possibly one of my least favorite body ill sensations to feel. And doing a quick review of Google, obviously, I found WebMD's great little definition that I really quite enjoyed. So WebMD's definition of nausea is an uneasiness that comes within the stomach prior to vomiting. And vomiting is the forcibly, and it could either be voluntary or it could be involuntary, removal or ejection of the stomach contents via the mouth. Nothing like being direct and to the point. And I'm sure every single one of us at some point in time has experienced nausea and likely vomiting as well over the course of our lives. Now, the problem with nausea is it's kind of like fatigue in that it's very nondescript and it can have a countless number of causes that lead to it. Everything from like early pregnancy to potentially a viral infection to doing too many keg stands at a frat house to the smell of your dog's Tootsie Roll that they left in the backyard for you. And to be quite honest, I feel a little bit of vomit coming up in the back of my throat just thinking about some of those things. Anyways, nausea is also a very common side effect that can occur when you first start on the GLP-1 receptor agonists such as Ozempic and Sexenda. Now, I do need to get a little bit of legal stuff out of the way here in that if you are experiencing nausea and you can't pinpoint what's causing it, where it's coming from, or it's consistently being there, or it worsens to the point where you are vomiting, and in particular, if there's blood in that vomit or anything in that respect of things, you definitely need to follow up with your family doctor or go to the ER, depending on the situation. So please, please, please do that and don't continue watching my videos. As I said, nausea can be a very nondescript symptom that could potentially just be benign and nothing whatsoever, or it could be something that's very serious. Now that that's out of the way, let's talk about the nausea that comes with the GLP-1 medications. Now, nausea is a side effect, like many of the other ones that come with the GLP-1 medications, that comes on when you first start the medication. And eventually, as your body gets used to the medication, that side effect will subside. Now, the cause of nausea due to the GLP-1 medications is thought to be twofold. Number one, not only is it due to the slowing of food moving through your GI tract, so how quickly food moves from your stomach to your small intestine, but there also seems to be a neurogenic origin as well. Or in plain English terms, there is some other point that the GLP-1 molecule is acting within your nervous system in order to cause that nausea. Either way, it is pretty common and it can be pretty bothersome for some people and in very rare instances, it can certainly lead to vomiting. Now, usually most of my patients report that they experience the nausea after eating a meal. In particular, if they happen to overeat at that meal or they try to consume their regular portion and their stomach just can't handle it because things are just not moving along as quickly. And if something can't go down very quickly, the only way that it's going to go if you put too much pressure on it is back up. Hence, we get the feeling of nausea and in rare circumstances, we can get vomiting. Now, in saying all of that, the nausea can also occur outside of these mealtimes as well. It might be sporadic, occurring randomly throughout the day, and is in no rhyme or reason or in conjunction with the meal whatsoever. And in some instances, again, this nausea can be severe enough for some people that they may actually vomit. Now, you might be thinking, well, that sounds effing horrible, and for a few rare poor souls out there, it definitely can be. Like I said, these medications can come with side effects, for a vast majority of people, they are mild, they are transient in that they go away, and they aren't a problem for a majority of people, but a few small percentage of people, probably the ones that are going to comment on this video, will tell you that, yeah, it is an unpleasant experience when they experience these side effects, and ultimately, if you do, 
we need to take you off of the medication. And a lot of people will confuse this nausea and just in general not wanting to eat aspect of things as the reason how these drugs help you in losing weight. But the reality is, is that this is just a side effect. The nausea will go away as your body gets used to the medication. The way that these drugs help us to lose weight is by working within the brain and decreasing your want and food seeking behaviors. And a big thing of this whole process is that if your nausea is severe enough that you are unable to eat whatsoever, that is a big red flag for these drugs because you still need to properly nourish your body in order to manage your weight. If you're not properly eating, if you're not getting enough protein and nutrients and that sort of thing, you're not going to be able to keep the proverbial lights of your body on and ultimately it's going to lead to other problems and issues. So definitely following up with your care team if you're having any problems with these drugs. Now, a number of people will fight through the nausea and the vomiting all in the quest for weight loss. And I'm going to tell you that you deserve to feel good and not feel nauseated and be vomiting on a daily basis. The weight loss is not worth it. There are other agents and medications that are out there. Please follow up with your care team. You deserve to feel good and live an appropriate, healthy life. So how do we manage the nausea side effects if you happen to experience it or how can we potentially prevent them from happening in the first place? Now, my recommendations are going to be quite similar to what I gave in my heartburn video, which you can check out in the link down below, but I'm going to list them off here for you again as well with a few minor tweaks and changes. So the number one thing that pretty much across the board for managing all of the symptoms that come with the GLP-1 receptor agonist is to eat smaller and more frequent meals throughout the day. That way, we're not stuffing your stomach full of food with larger meals. We're getting small nibbles, bite-sized bites kind of thing throughout the day in order to make the side effects more manageable. Number two, focus on bland foods. What did your mom make you as a kid when you had a GI bug? You were puking your guts up, your tummy was upset, and you just wanted something that was soothing. So what did your mom make you? Was it soup and crackers? Was it milk toast? Think about those kinds of foods and incorporate them in the short term while you're trying to overcome this side effect if you are experiencing it. Number three, slow down when you eat. Take the time to smell the proverbial roses or in this case your food. Enjoy and savor every single bite. Don't try to force it. Don't try to keep consuming and eating because I promise you, you will ultimately regret it. Listen to your body, take your time with it and enjoy your meal. Number four. Eat without distractions. Now, this ties into number three in the sense that you want to enjoy and really savor your meal and stuff like that. But eating without distractions allows you to better be better attuned to listening to your body, feeling the sensations, feeling where your body is at in terms of your fullness, and eat until you're satisfied. Don't eat until you're full. Eat until you're satisfied or just feel like, hmm, I'm kind of on that edge. Should I push it? Should I have one more bite? In this case, you probably shouldn't. So, Eat without distractions, no TV, no cell phone, no book, just you, your meal, and just relaxing and enjoying it. Number five, avoid foods and situations that caused you nausea in the past. The dog poop in the backyard might be a good time to get your partner to clean it up because I can tell you if something was bad pre-medication, it's probably going to be worse, at least in this initial period while you're on the medication. And finally, we again can also look at using other medications to treat the side effects of the GLP-1 medications in the short term. Now, obviously, this is not the ideal as there are other risks and stuff like that that are associated with taking another medication. They might have their own side effects altogether. So that's something to definitely be mindful of, but it is something that we do look at. You just need to follow up with your care team and your own personal doctor. Gravol and ginger are usually the two first go-to items. There are other more powerful prescription-based products that can help with the nausea aspect of things. Again, your doctor would need to prescribe them and do in a proper assessment to determine if that is the appropriate therapy for you. We really don't have any concrete evidence to say, hey, this nausea is due to the GLP-1. When I give you X drug, it takes away or manages the nausea. It's more anecdotally than anything else. They seem to work, provide some benefits for some people, other people not so much. So it really varies person to person. Again, it's a conversation for you and your care providers. And again, if the side effects are severe enough, you may need to stop the drug. And that is totally okay. There are other agents, there are other modalities, there are other things that we can look at out there for you in order to help you to get the best possible results. All right, you beautiful people, that is nausea, how we manage the nausea that comes with the GLP-1 medications. 
Hopefully that was helpful for you. Stay tuned for next week where, or maybe even down the road sometime, where we are going to cover constipation and diarrhea. What are we looking at? How do we manage that when it comes to the GLP-1 medications? But until next time, you beautiful people, don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below. And of course, check me out on my other channels at the official Dr. Dan. I'm on the TikTok, the gram, you name it. As well, check out my website, healthcareevolve.ca, where you can book a free consult with myself. If you need some additional support in your weight management journey, definitely come and check it out. And as always, remember, small tweaks lead to massive peaks.